All right, this is the big one. Uh, when we talk about social media, online marketing, and uh, promotion, uh, this is, for the most part, uh, probably one of the first things that come to mind. Uh, I'm Giovanni Gallucci. Uh, we're talking about social media and how to effectively use it with your marketing and your online promotions. And we are going to talk about social networks. Uh, when we're talking about social networks, you know, everybody pretty much knows what they are. They know it's MySpace and they know it's Facebook and Friendster and some of these other sites. Let's take care of our, our description and, and make sure that we're on the same page so we're talking about the same thing. We're talking about typically a set of social actors. So this can be people, it can be communities, uh, it can be uh, organizations, it can be nations. I mean, we, we, we can have networks set up around geographic stuff, about internal organizations, organizations that are uh, important to people internally and externally. There's all kinds of, of different relationships involved in social networks. You've got to make sure that uh, you don't have a, a, a social network unless there is a, a friendship uh, or a relationship there. We can be talking about friendships, uh, simple uh, need for communication, um, maybe family. Uh, so you've got kinship, uh, things like uh, family trees that are online that people can go and build out. Uh, shared memberships and, and organizations and it's important that whenever you look at these people and the relationships that there's a pattern there so that one particular person has a specific pattern of a relationship that is similar to uh, the, the rest of the folks that are inside the, the network. For the most part these social networks um, are pretty free. People are able to go in and add content. They have control over their relationships within the network, but if you look down at it from uh, the standpoint of the architecture of the network, uh, for the most part, everybody on a social network has the same access and has the same ability to communicate with other members of the network, and they typically all follow the same rules. A community social network is the pattern of relationships among people and organizations inside that community. So it's important that whenever we're looking at these things from a marketing perspective, that we're aware of what that pattern is, we are, we're aware of what the uh, cultural norms are and what the rules are for engagement, so to speak, and that we're uh, very cognizant and respectful of what those rules are. Um, I think I've said it several times during this series, uh, I can't stress it enough that playing by the rules and being uh, considerate of uh, the networks that we're looking at and the communities and the cultures that are involved is paramount to your success whenever we're, we're getting involved with social networks. Each one of these networks involve support or a, so, a, a social, you know, not necessarily a social safety net, but a, but a net of support and uh, provide the, a sense of community for each other. It's probably one of the reasons why I can go in and sign into a social network. And if it's a social network that is based upon music, and in particular a genre, that people are pretty quick to allow me to befriend them or make them a buddy on my network. And it's, it's ironic that that's the case because, because you could conceivably go into a network and add 1,500 people to, the, to, to your list of friends that you've never ever met, you've never communicated with. You, for the first time, uh, the first time you ever contacted them was an email from you saying that, hey, I'm over here on this network, would you be my friend? And the success rate in getting people to uh, accept that friendship and, and, and let you join their network is, is nothing short of amazing to me. And I think a lot of that is based upon the fact that people inherently are going to assume that they can trust you because you have some things in common already. Um, I'm logging into a social network based on golfing. Well, if Joe wants to sign up as a friend, um, well, he's a golfer too. He can't be that bad. Um, hey, he's a golfer from Dallas. Even more we have in common. Hey, he's a golfer from Dallas who uh, enjoys listening to the Pet Shop Boys and Culture Club. Mm, maybe. But yeah, he's okay. He's a golfer from Dallas. I'll go ahead and let him be my friend. Um, it's amazing how quickly people and how readily people accept uh, your invitation to join their networks. And uh, again, as, as people with a message, that's wonderful. And it's also uh, something you have to treat uh, with kindness, and uh, you have to make sure that you don't abuse those relationships. Uh, there's nothing wrong with using these networks in order to communicate with folks if you feel like you have something that's of value to them. But uh, when you uh, break that trust, then it's very difficult for you to recover from that. And what you may find is that the broken trust then bleeds out to other networks 
and you find yourself uh, having to uh, backtrack in, in a lot of different places because the, the viral aspect of these networks is very powerful and uh, if something happens negative or positive uh, virally in these environments and it picks up steam, uh, pretty much nothing can stop it. It's very difficult to, uh, to affect change once the ball gets rolling. I'd mentioned earlier uh, that uh, you know what people call um, the group mentality is the wisdom of the group. Well, you can also call it a knob mentality. Um, I think it depends on whether you're looking at it in a positive aspect or a negative aspect, but a mob mentality can definitely pick up very quickly. So uh, be, be uh, aware of that and, and treat these things with the respect that they deserve. Let's talk about the users within social networks so we know uh, the target that we're focusing on. Generally, uh, the 18 to 24 age range is going to be the most prolific age range in social networking sites. Major search engines also see that a very strong usage within this area, and, and we'll talk a little bit about how you tie in search uh, optimization efforts with uh, social networking and social media. Marketers who target this group have every reason in the world to establish uh, relationships and to start to participate within these areas. What you're going to find is that people that are members within social networks are ultra interactive. They're very quick, just like I mentioned before. The simple act of me asking someone to join my network, over the last two years, I have literally had one person deny. Actually, I'll say, I, I, oh, actually I have. I've had one person deny, completely deny me, um, my request for a buddy. And I've had about five people come back and say, hey, where do I know you from? And uh, I literally could tell that somebody that, hey, we're in the same meetup group, or hey, you're in Dallas and I'm in Dallas and we're both podcasters. And that's enough. I mean, you need very little in the way of a, a connection for people to, to inherently trust you and give you a chance to be a friend of theirs within their networks. Um, and once you become friends, um, and when I say friends, I mean you're connected through the network together, um, it's, it's interesting how the psychology of the networks work and how quickly people are to actually really become friends on the net and start to communicate and share information with each other. It's important that engaging with the age group, as long as it's relevant, is a fantastic channel to allow you to get relevant information and feedback about uh, your products and your services and the message. It's also a great tool for you to establish trust within a community. These are spiels from ICE Prospect. ICE Prospect did uh, some research uh, in 2006 and they, they've got a great report about what they found uh, on social networks in particular. Um, and I agree with 100% of the stuff they found. It's, it's what I see every day in social networks. So.